Huh? Union. Yeah, it's that one. Combined. A intersect B? Yeah. Not intersect. Yeah. Uh, it means that everything except zero? Always. I guess so, yeah. Uh -huh. If where it is like. Zero is just outside. If that's the only one outside, then fine. So they're looking for everything that's inside. A and B. You've confused me now. Uh, <laughs> we can do. We can look at this uh, in the next class yeah. after you try them. Because I have to continue with this now. Okay, guys. Yeah. Uh, okay, two minutes and then we'll continue. Yeah, what are the letters that this has in common with itself? Yeah, the same. Yeah. So S intersect S is still S. Yeah. Can I write S You could, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, let's have a look now. So, guys, can we look up now? Um, what's useful about Venn diagrams is that it can be used for probability. So, if I write PA, that means the probability of A, as you know. Uh, probability of A. PB equals probability of B. Yeah. And then PA intersect B, that's the probability of what? A and B. It's the probability of getting both. And this here, that's the probability of A or B. And this here? Probability of not A. So you could use Venn diagrams here to come up with a couple of rules. So let's just represent this here. There's event A and there's event B. And this, if I write here point one, that means the probability of A and B happening together is point one. Yeah? <coughs> so, you know, um, I'll be a simple example for you. Yeah, let's say A and B represent offers from two different universities. So getting A means you get your first offer and B means you get your second choice, uh, an offer letter as well. So point one would mean that they both offer you. That's right, right yeah, okay, point one. Uh, this number here, 
that would mean event A, but not B. So that means the first university gives you an upper letter. What about if I was to write here? Six. What would this mean? This would mean B gives you an upper letter, but not A. If I add point 0.3, point 0.1, and point 0.4 together, what do I get? Point 0.8, eight, isn't it? What does point 0.8 represent? You got an offer from anyone. And the total must make one. So outside here, I can write point 0.2. What does that point 0.2 represent? No offers. Yeah. So the... Venn diagram is very useful for answering probability questions quite uh, uh, easily, quite straightforward. Let's see. We'll have a look. We'll have a look at an example. But here's an example, and I'll write it down here. A re represents a university one makes offer. B represents university two makes an offer. Okay? Let me just add in a couple of follow-up questions. So, anyways, we said, let me just write down what we have. A or B make an offer. That is, what do we say? Point 0.8. Getting an offer from both. That's A intersect B. That represents, uh, that's uh, point 0.1. Getting an offer from A but not B. That's point 0.3. Again, an offer from B but not A? 0.4. Now, suppose I want something like getting exactly one offer. What would that be? Well, well firstly, what would the number be? Getting exactly one offer. No, 0.7. Because getting one offer means you get an offer from A or an offer from B, but not an offer from both and not no offers. Yeah? So 0.7, yeah. So getting one offer would be the probability of A making an offer and not B or Inter uh, union, sorry. Uh, union, B making an offer, but not A. I just want you to know that these can be written in many different ways. Like I could have written it like this A makes an offer and not B, or B makes an offer and not A. I'm just trying to get you used to the notation here, okay? Yeah. Can you write that example down? Yes. Got that?
Ja? Okay. Can I go on to the next, another example? Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to read out some information I want you to try and put it into a Venn diagram, okay? Can I scroll down? So we'll make this sort of a, a more medical example. So we're looking at two events. Event H represents the patient having heart disease, and event C represents the patient having high cholesterol. H, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes. uh, H represents that they have heart disease. And C represents that they are suffering from high cholesterol. Okay? So I'm going to give you some information and I want you to fill in this Venn diagram. Okay, so... Um, at this particular hospital... 40% of patients have heart disease at this clinic, whatever it is. And 30% have high cholesterol. Okay, I'll read again. 40% of patients have heart disease. And 30% have high cholesterol. 40% have neither heart disease or high cholesterol. So 40% have neither heart disease nor uh, high cholesterol. So my question then is, how many patients have both heart disease and high cholesterol? And if you like, I'll help you write this down. I'll say... The probability of patients with heart disease, uh, that's 0.4. With cholesterol is 0.3. And uh, neither uh, heart disease and uh, high uh, cholesterol is, what did I say? 0.4. So look, these are the, how many patients have heart disease? 40. How many patients have high cholesterol? 30. 30. How many patients are perfectly healthy, they don't have heart disease, and they don't have high cholesterol? 40. 40. So I'm asking you, what is the probability, or rather, how many patients have heart disease and cholesterol, high cholesterol? You look, you're guessing. Write the numbers in the Venn diagram. Now, look, guys, I'll give you a little hint. You think you got it? Uh, let's have a look at this now. I'll write an X here. That's what I'm looking for, isn't it? Yeah. How many patients have heart disease? 0.4. If this is X, then how much is here? 0.4 minus X, because the total needs to be 0.4. How much is here? Point three minus x. Uh, point three minus x. Equal each other. No, not, not quite equals. You know, uh, oh, and um, there's a number outside here as well. Okay. Um, it actually we know it's point four because of this. These are the patients completely healthy. No. Heart disease and no cholesterol. They're outside both sets. Um, so, there's one piece of information we can use to help find the X. Now, they all must add to 1. The total probability must be 1. We talked about this before when we did our tree diagrams. So, 0.4 minus X plus x plus 
plus 0.3 minus x plus 0.4 equals 1. Total probability is always 1. That's a rule. 1 or 100? Huh? 100%. Oh, please. Uh, point 0.4, point 0.4 is point 0.8, and point 0.3 is 1.1, is it? X and a minus X cancel, so you're left with minus X equals 1 minus 1.1. Yeah, so X equals 0.1 then. 10% then. So 10% of patients have heart disease and high cholesterol. Yes. Yes. Say again? The total it must be one. No, no. This plus this plus this plus this for all diagrams must always be one. Let's actually fill in the axis point one. So and I just add the numbers in. Um Uh, this here is 0 0.3, here, 0 0.1, here, 0 0.2, and here, 0.4. How many patients have heart disease, but their cholesterol is perfectly fine? 30%. How many patients have high cholesterol, but do not have heart disease? 20%. How many patients have either heart disease problems or cholesterol problems? 60%. 312. Yeah? Uh, and then lastly, how many patients have um, heart disease problems or cholesterol problems, but not both? 5. 5. Yeah. So the Venn diagrams are useful because a lot of probabilities you can represent and answer lots of questions with the Venn diagram. I'll give you one more to try together. Um, can I scroll down? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll write it down and I want you to fill it in. Um, this is with a 52 card deck. Or means the card is red, and Q means the card is a queen. And I would like you to fill in this Venn diagram. Uh, please give your answers as fractions over 52, if you like. Huh? Do I? Like the listening exam. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. There is some instructions provided for that. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's because uh, we know that students aren't always fully listening. I <laughs> noticed. It, it comes from experience. <laughs> now, I've had at least two students in this class today have a little sleep. Who they are? Sleepy. What? No. What? Right. So fresh. Yeah, sure, yeah. Good, strong rest of the eyes. Yeah, and studying too much maths, isn't it? Yeah. By what? Which which problem are we talking about? Oh yeah, are we divided by what? Which number by two? 
52? No. Huh? Half the deck is is red, correct. Yeah? But this doesn't this doesn't mean half the deck is queens. Oh yeah, but the, yeah, half the deck is red. Yes. If this is what you're asking me, then twenty-six cards are red. Yeah. No, no, there's enough there. No, I don't play cards. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay, you know how is this the cards? Yeah. You know cards. Ah, come on. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. How many... Let's start with the intersection. How many... Yes, two. <laughs> Well, tell me then, Ray, what are the two red queen cards? Uh, hearts and diamonds. Hearts and diamonds. Queen of hearts and queen of diamonds. There's two of them, 252. No, no. Uh, yeah, Don't encourage it. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Now, how many, uh, we were saying that earlier, how many red cards are all together? 26. We have two of them accounted for here. So this is 24 over 52. Okay. Yeah. How many queens are in a deck? Four. So two are accounted for here. So two. 2 over 52. Now, have I accounted for all the cards? No, no I've only accounted for 28 of them. Yeah. Meaning, uh, um, what's that? There's 24 left, is it? So that must mean there's 24 out here, is it? Didn't I get that? Did we get that right? 48? Yeah, 52. No, no. 52. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, how about the Joker? What number would be affected if there were two Jokers in the deck? Just this number. Oh, well, also, actually, the 52s would become... 54, yes. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think they would give you this type of one in um, the exam. Because I don't think they expect you to know your cards for the exam okay uh, it probably it'd probably be more like the one we just did with the heart disease and cholesterol that would seem like the type of question you'd get in the exam uh, oh so uh, just to finish you can treat these problems as venn diagram problems but if you want you can also make use of formulas as well uh, for example you can say the probability of A intersect B is equal to... Now, I won't do the proof. It's, it's not too difficult, but I'll just give it to you if you want to use it. If you want A intersect B, that's PA plus PB minus PA union B. And vice versa. If you want A uh, union B, that's PA plus PB minus PA intersect B. And finally, if you want P not A, that's 1 minus P A. And likewise, P A equals 1 minus P not A. Some students prefer using these formulas to help solve these problems, especially if they've seen these formulas before. I don't mind. Um, I prefer the Venn diagram, but if you just want to use formulas, you can do it with using these formulas. Yeah. Okay, these questions are quite easy, so I want you to do the 10 questions on page 96. You can start them now. Come on, Ray, get started. Don't, please. <laughs> 